So what absolutely is this idea of emotional state mastery? Look at this, time equals emotion every single second Every moment you're passing, you're experiencing an emotion. So whether you're on a listening appointment, there's an emotion. Whether you're with your family, there's an emotion. When you get out of bed in the morning, there is emotion. The question is, what emotions are you experiencing most of the time? I would recommend you guys all just Google emotional state or emotional guidance scale. It kind of looks like something like this. And the first seven emotions right here, this comes from the book Asking is Given with Abraham Hicks. The first seven emotions are positive, powerful emotions like joy, appreciation, passion, enthusiasm, excitement, down to contentment. Now, contentment is a very dangerous emotion because it's on the borderline of going into the negative space, which is boredom, pessimism, frustration, irritation, impatience, worry, doubt, overwhelmment, uh, blame, discouragement, anger, hatred, jealousy, insecurity, guilt, unworthiness, and power. Less, okay, so when we take a look at those, we want to make sure that we're staying in the upper levels of our emotional state. The question is, is how do we do that? Step number one is you have to have a morning, a day, and an evening routine. And really, I believe your morning routine and your evening routine are extremely important because your morning routine, you're setting the stage and the tone for your energy and your emotion throughout the day. What we have to begin to understand though is throughout the day, how do we shift our emotion if we go to a negative state? And there's three major ways. One is our physiology. Let's get our physiology moving. That's getting up and moving around, going on a walk, bouncing, exercising, doing something. You can do that instantly. Second one is your focus or the thoughts that are going in your mind. Understand your thoughts are not your thoughts, but you're the observer of your thoughts. And when you sit back and you just look at them, you can choose which thoughts you want to stay in your head or not. And then the third is your language. So you're anchoring to the specific emotions that you want. That's why power declarations are so extremely important. What really moves us forward though, is when we are in a negative state, isn't just the ability to shift it in that moment, but it's our preventative exercises, or more importantly, the behaviors and habits that we're building from our routines. One of the behaviors that I've built for me is because practice makes permanent, is the practices that I put into place. Practices like breath work, meditation, reading, journal writing, making sure that I'm listening to my declarations over and over again throughout the day, doing things like I've recently started going back to ice baths and um, things that are going to challenge my mind to bring up self-doubt, to bring up self-worry and to challenge me of actually quitting because if I can face those fears in a practice, guess what, when those fears pop up in real life, I'm already prepared with my behaviors and habits to move forward because the reality is we're going to have challenges. Wrenches will get on our spokes. It's going to make us fall on our face. And the question is what are our behaviors or habits going to allow us to get up and move to that positive state of emotion? There's the feel good zone or the feel bad zone. I want to recommend that you get really deep into your morning, day, and evening routine immediately. Create those rituals that are going to elevate your state of emotion so that you can live life at a high level. Naturally, it's going to just be happier to be in that state, but also it's going to allow you to be more emotionally attractive. When you're emotionally attractive, more buyers, more sellers, more people are going to want to do business with you. And that's really the goal with building your business.